There are eight planets. We live in one, the Earth. Inside the Earth, we have the continents. One is Africa. In Africa, we have Kenya. In Kenya, we have Nairobi. In Nairobi, we have the CBD. In Nairobi CBD Harithuku Road, next to Nairobi University, inside Kenya National Theatre, this is not fine to be fine. Starring Eddie Butita. <laughs> I'm depressed. It has not been easy. For the past two months, every night I cry. Ever since I saw Drake giving people free money. <laughs> in God's plan. How is it God's plan and I was not there? <laughs> if I was there, I would come first of all as I am. Hey, Drake, God's plan, God's plan. Then Drake will give me cash. Thank you, Drake. Then I'll go back and come back as an old guy. Drake, God's plan. Then I take the cash. Go back and come back as a dwarf. Drake, I'm short and sweet. God's plan. <laughs> it's God's plan that you have a good life. You buy a car. You build a good house, right? But why is it that Africans, we associate negative things with God's plan? You'll hear some people talking like, ah, I went for a wedding last uh, Saturday. It was the biggest wedding. Ah, that wedding was big. Those people know how to plan. They had a good planner. Then on, my, on Monday, uh, my brother lost a job. It's God's plan. <laughs> How is it God's plan? Drake walked for 20 kilometers. In fact, it was miles and miles, giving people cash. God's plan, God's plan. How many people can do that? I know Jimmy, uh, Bill Gates can navigate the whole world giving out cash because he has a lot of money. Hey, God's plan, God's plan. I know some people can't even last for 10 meters. <laughs> if I'm told to give out all the cash that I have, it will be three steps. God's plan. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it's God's plan that everyone is fine, right? Yeah, everyone is, uh, are you fine, all of, all of you, are you fine? First of all, are you fine? Yeah. That's the problem. People don't say when they are not fine. Why? You ask a random person, are you fine? Yes, I'm fine. How do you know someone is not fine? By paying attention to the word fine. We have three types of fines. We have the normal fine. Like, how are you doing? You're fine. How is the weather today? It's fine. Then we have the second fine, which is short and fast. Fine. <laughs> fine. It's used as a threat. Or to show people you're not going to do what you are told. Like, oh, babe, when you go out, we are going to break up. Fine. <laughs> the third type of fine is the fine with multiple Ys. Fine. You all know what that means. Something attractive eh? has just appeared. There is this beautiful lady, like Kim Kardashian is fine. Rihanna is fine. Akode is fine. There comes a time in life where I use all types of fine in one context. Someone calls you on a Friday night. Hey, let's go out. Ah, that's fine, that's fine, I'm coming. Then you arrive at the club, the bouncer wants an ID. So you want my ID. Fine. Then you get into the club, you see fine ladies. Then the moment you get a good lady, that's when your friend wants to leave. Ah, uh, let's go. You want to go? Fine! <laughs> 
The state, uh, some things have not been fine in Africa, uh, like jobs. The state of jobs in Africa is not fine. There are no jobs in Africa. No jobs at all. That's why if you go to church, you'll find people spending 30 minutes trying to find the book of jobs. <laughs> the pastor says, uh, open second job. How do you open second job and you don't have a first job? <laughs> Lack of jobs in Africa has made the society desperate. That's why people are taking advantage of us. You log into your social media account, the first post, earn 5,000 per week by sitting at home. <laughs> Second post, Mary became a billionaire by using Facebook alone. You click on that account, the image you see, a guy in an oversized suit, photoshopped next to a private jet, besides a tiger, caption, this could be us. <laughs> I once called that number because everyone wants to be rich. I tried to call that number and the person who received had no idea of that ad. Uh, hello? Uh, hello. Uh, I saw a job application, a job uh, advertisement on Friday. Job advertisement. When? On Friday. Where exactly? <laughs> on Facebook. Facebook. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, you want a job? Uh, yes, I want a job. Uh, so you'll be earning 5,000 per week. Oh, that's nice. Now, send 1,000. <laughs> Hello? Hello? The number you've dialed is not in service. The sad part is that people send this cash. Someone sends 1,000 to get 5,000 per week. That has never happened in India. Because Indians are the only people who can negotiate with fraudsters. So what do you want me to do? Uh, you are going to pay 1,000, then earn 5,000 every week. I have a better deal. <laughs> I take 4,000 every week, you keep 1,000 forever. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> if you see a job advert anywhere, Pay attention to the qualifications. If you happen to meet all the qualifications, like all the qualifications that, that are, are listed, you have them. Run away. That's not a job. It's a trap. <laughs> like, uh, must be above 20 years. You know that bell that rings in your mind when you see something you have? Must be above 20 years. Ding. Uh, <laughs> must be fluent in English. Ding. <laughs> must be flexible to, flexible to travel. Ding. <laughs> Should work under no supervision. Dang! Call zero zero. A real job, a job that pays well, has qualification that not just anyone can have. Must be a Kenyan citizen. Dang! Above 20 years. Dang! With bachelor's in commerce. Dang! With majors in acute financing and bookkeeping. <laughs> Din. <laughs> Must have worked under a peacekeeping mission in Somalia for seven years. <laughs> That's when it changes from ding to a Nigerian movie. Wow. <laughs> if you meet the job, uh, uh, if you meet the criteria, chances are high that you'll send your CV. You're going to send your, your CV. For you to have a good CV, let me tell you this for free, you need to lie. The only honest part in a CV should be basic information. Like your name, religion, nationality, date of birth, education background, certificates are present, you can't lie. Interests, that's where lies start checking in one by one. All of a sudden you become a nice person, philanthropist. Interests, helping street kids. Taking companies to the next level. <laughs> Networking. Why don't we say the truth? If you are a man, just write the truth. Interests. Coming back home at six. <laughs> Watching football until midnight. Blocking ladies after the first date. <laughs> if you are a woman, just speak the truth. Interests. Spying on my boyfriend's phone. <laughs> then there is the referee's part. 
That's where international lies check in. All of a sudden, you become a company registrar and an employee and an employer. Yeah, an employer. You start registering companies that don't exist in your mind. Your sister suddenly becomes retired Major General Janet. <laughs> Vancouver, Canada. Your brother becomes CEO, multi-keeping cash company. Your mom becomes a professor of a university that does not exist. Massachusetts College and University combined. Plus daycare. When you list someone as a referee, make sure you tell them. Train them. Because some people, when they are called, they have no idea of the job that you listed them. Someone is being called like a, hello? Yes, hello? Uh, we want to confirm some information about uh, Butita. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Uh, are you retired Major General uh, Somalia Peacekeeping International uh, Mission? Huh? <laughs> okay. Where did you meet with Butita? Canada, Canada. Where exactly in Canada? Johannesburg. <laughs> that happened to me. So I decided that the next thing I'm going to do, when I list someone as a referee, I train them. I give them a script. It's like when they call you, this is what you say. In fact, you read. Yes, I know Butita is a man of integrity. He's a man who cannot steal from a company. Butita, in fact, should be the CEO of that company. So I trained someone, I told someone that when they call you, play within the script. The bad thing is that some people are good actors. This guy was called, he started exaggerating things. Hello, uh, we want uh, to ask you some information about Butita. Yes, Butita is a good guy. Ah, we call him Savior. Ah, ah. You saw the guy who saved a kid in Paris. Butita did that in 2011. <laughs> Ah, oh, Budita is a prayerful man. He even healed one of our clients. <laughs> In fact, I had some people, they wanted to call him Messiah because he fed 5,000 people during our seminar. <laughs> he can even work for free. I stopped trusting people. Because they can't save me. So I decided that uh, I'm going to play a trick with my girlfriend. Like, uh, whenever she applies a, a job, I'll be a referee. Whenever I apply for a job, she'll be the referee. The saddest thing is that we broke up immediately after applying for a job. <laughs> then she was called. Hello. Hello. Uh, we want to ask you some information about Butita. Butita the drunkard or the thief? <laughs> uh... The ICT technician. <laughs> That's what he told you. <laughs> so do you think we should employ him? But don't call me again. <laughs> so I decided I'll revenge. And that day came when I saw a new number. I received and they were, hello, uh, we want to ask you some information about uh, Grace. Anger issues. Uh, what do you mean by anger issues? Ghost worker. <laughs> Listen, young man. So that is what you say about my daughter? When your CV uh, passes through the board and they approve it, that means they'll call you for an interview in person. There is nothing bad like going for an interview. Then you find 50 people. Yet it was written, one job vacancy. That's when you change from being a job seeker to an interviewer. You start interviewing people in your mind. Eh, that one is old. They want fresh graduates. <laughs> what? Eh, this lady is fine. If the interviewers are men, we are done. Eh, this guy has a new phone. He has connections in the government. Eh, this one they'll give you. Ah. Ah, they don't want short people. <laughs> By the time you are done, you disqualify everyone. You disqualify everyone. If you go for an interview, just pray that you find women interviewing. Because women are the best interviewers. 
They don't take sides, yeah? That's true. Yeah. Women don't take? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> because they ask straight questions. The problem is that sometimes you feel like they're speaking on behalf of your girlfriend. So, uh, what are your values? Uh, working hard, working until late. So, you don't like going home early? <laughs> mm -hmm. If men interview you, then you are doomed if you are a man. Because men will treat ladies nicely, then they don't treat fellow men with respect. Same questions, different reactions. A lady will be asked, uh, how did you hear about this company? I was told by a friend. She has friends, she loves networking. <laughs> She's good, yeah, yeah. Work experience? Three months. Ah, if three months she has grown out of that job, she wants another one, this is a good employee. A man walks into the room, same question. How did you hear about this company? Through a friend. Hey, this one has no idea of our company. <laughs> he was even told by a friend. Yeah? Work experience? 20 years. For 20 years without growth. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We will call you. We have your date of birth. <laughs> My job number one in this world was uh, to become a pilot. Uh, how many people wanted to become pilots? Uh, like, you wanted to be pilots, right? Because they're being paid well. We all know. You know, in Africa, you have to be a pilot if you want to board a flight. So as a kid, I used to travel by bus. But I used to admire that one day I'll become a pilot. Traveling by bus is one of the most hectic things. It's not fine. It's fine. Yeah? Because when you travel by bus, it depends on the person who is seated next to you. If you are seated next to an old person, you are no longer a passenger. You are a pillow. When they fall asleep, they calm down, you see? When you're traveling next to a kid, you are no longer a passenger, you are a babysitter. So I used to sit next to the driver because I used to have a phobia that the driver might sleep. So I would sit next to the driver, keep the driver engaged so that he doesn't fall asleep. Like I ask irrelevant questions, obvious questions. Hey driver, hey, what is the difference between gravity and graffiti? <laughs> driver, hey, 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 hey. So this road is, uh, is going, yeah? Hey, driver, sometimes I'll even throw boring jokes just to keep the driver engaged. Hey, driver, do you know why an elephant is rude? Hmm? Do you know why an elephant is rude? It has a trump. <laughs> hmm? When I boarded my first flight, things were different because the pilot and the co-pilot are locked inside a cockpit. So when we took off, one hour later, everyone fell asleep. There is no way someone will convince me that if everyone is sleeping around me, what about those people locked inside there? <laughs> if they are not sleeping, they are kissing. I don't know why they lock pilots in a cockpit. Like it's the number one job, it's paying. If I was a pilot, no one would lock me. In fact, the moment I board a flight, I would big up myself. Hey, it's your pilot, it's your pilot, yeah. <laughs> Is that your girlfriend? It's a pilot, yeah, a pilot, yeah. <laughs> but so guys, as a pilot, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make sure it's a smooth uh, flight. Pilot, <laughs> the guy, you want a selfie? When we land, right? <laughs> we should see these people. Because sometimes we only hear what they say, but we can't see them like a... Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I see your captain on flight 1112. Flight technology has been evolving years. Flies, flights are changing. We have new technology. But these guys have never invested in clear sound. <laughs> Up to now. Ladies and gentlemen... Like that guy sounds like a colonialist in World War II state of emergency announcement. It should be clear, and it's the same when you go to China, Mombasa, you go to Uganda, anywhere, it's ladies and gentlemen. I think it should be different, depending on where you are going. Yeah, if you go to America, it should be in an American way. If I'm going to America, give me an American feeling. Let me feel like I'm going to America, this is the American dream. 
The pilot should be like, what's up party people? It's your boy cut to the P to the tail. What did I say? It's your boy cut to the P to the? You are smart. You are loyal. Make sure you come for another one. When I'm going to India, give me an Indian feeling. Just shake the flight for no reason. Let me fear. Like, like, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I'm your captain, and uh, this is going to be a good flight. We have two emergency doors. In case of emergency, you swipe, you jump out. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have business and economy, but everyone is business inside here. <laughs> when I'm going to Nigeria, give me a Nigerian feeling. Let my bag disappear for no reason. <laughs> yeah? Just be that Nigerian, that arrogant Nigeria who is honest. Like, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your captain, and uh, uh, we are going to start flying. In case of an emergency, there is two doors. But even if you jump, where are you jumping to? <laughs> where are you jumping to? When you board a flight, the hours varies. Like, it takes eight hours from Nairobi to Amsterdam. Eight hours. But if it's your first time, it takes 12. Because of the tension. If you're sitting next to an old person, it takes 14. If you're sitting next to your girlfriend and she's holding your phone and she has your password, it takes forever. <laughs> I don't know why ladies all of a sudden, they begin trusting men in case of an emergency. Like, uh, you experience turbulence, then she holds you. Then, why are you holding your boyfriend? You're on the same flight. <laughs> if it goes down, you both go down. Why do ladies behave as if they'll be telling people, ah, you are single, you're crashing? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Flights were the best discoveries that were made in this world. We have a lot of discoveries that up to now, we applaud those types of discoveries. Like the guy who discovered light. Aish. Imagine this world without light. That guy discovered light. Eh? Imagine 20th century, 21st century without light. Hmm? Traffic light. A policeman with a light at. <laughs> hmm? There is a guy who discovered a computer. Imagine this world without a computer. Eh? This world without a computer, how would it be? Hmm? How do you even type? How do you even download? Eh? Then there is a guy who discovered gravity. Fraud of the century. Scam. <laughs> how do you discover something that exists? Isaac Newton sat under a tree, then an apple fell down, then he convinced us he has discovered gravity. Ah, that guy should be arrested immediately. Do you know why? Because let's go back to the history. Uh, when Israelites were coming from Egypt to Canaan, eh? manna fell from? What made that happen? <laughs> gravity. When Simon helped Jesus carry the cross, he fell three times. What made that happen? <laughs> then Isaac Newton tells us that he cross. <laughs> huh? Huh? Then another person went to the moon. He convinced us there is no gravity. But up to now we believe there is no gravity. That same person now is telling us that in the in moon there's some possibility of life. That years to come, some people might be taken to the moon. If that time comes, as the world and Africa, let's talk about Africa, not even the world, we should vote, vote against Nigerians. Because I can't imagine, I'm in the moon, I'm trying to walk, and someone's like, oh God, do you want gravity now? <laughs> look, I can't jump. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> huh? How do you live on a planet that doesn't have gravity? How do you even make love like you? <laughs> what are you waiting for? There is no force to come back. <laughs> gravity. 
Then there is a guy who discovered Google Maps. A genius. But the English, American. You are in Africa being told, turn to 001 road. What is 001 road? I wish Africans would have discovered Google Maps. At least, it will be simple. Africans will be understanding the African way. Like you type in your destination, uh, Nairobi CBD. Turn left. Go and go and go. You'll see a blue gate. Leave that gate alone. Turn right. <laughs> Ask that woman. She knows. <laughs> like Apple, iPhone, they discovered Siri. Siri is patient enough, like you can ask Siri anything. Yeah, the patience that Siri has, no one has. It's like, a, a Siri, what's your name? My name is Siri. Siri, where do you come from? California. Siri, Siri, yes. Siri, Siri, I love you. I love you too. Siri, when is today? Wednesday. Siri, Siri, yes. If Siri was an African project. <laughs> Siri, yes. What's your name? Siri. What's your name? I said Siri. <laughs> Siri, Siri, when is today? Wednesday. Siri, Siri, how old are you? The next thing you'll hear is a knock on your door. Young man, bring that phone, I'm Siri. <laughs> Eddie Butita, check, check, check. Now they say they don't have any other message to Butita, they just want to say one word. So let's hear what they have to say. What do you want to say to Butita? Butita, we love you! Um, I love the show. Actually, it was, it was having some creativity at peak. Um, and personally, from years back, uh, uh, Butita was my mentor on how uh, I'm taking as a mystery. So, okay, personally as an artist, I feel I have so much to do. Like, an only challenge, yani. Eddie Butita. Uh, when you go shine, Aduko Injani from Kariobangi to the world. Man, this is so great. Uh, this is a great step. It is always good. It's always a dream to, uh, to every great comedian to have their own thing. You know, the, we, we have stand up comedy. Not enough, though. We need more shows. And this is amazing. We have sitcoms. Not enough. We have guys going uh, um, internet. So I, I think this is a great step. Uh, Butita is a mentor to most of the, most comedians. Kuna wakati alikuwa director wetu. And uh, the, the comedy family in general, tunamueshimu sana. Kwa sababu he's one of the most brilliant guys we have. Uh, he's one of those guys at stage. Si story na ukalulu ama nini ama nini. Vitu wanaongea ni vitu wamefikiria. Ni brilliant. Uh, he's a genius. Butita was not just fine tonight. He was fine, man. It was fine. So uh, I'm happy to, to be here tonight. And uh, I think Butita has just set a standard for, not for himself alone, yes. but for most of us also uh, already in the industry. Yes. He has taken enough time to brew himself uh, to do such a show tonight. And I believe that uh, this is the trend to, to, to move with. He also helped me a lot when I was doing mine in Nakuru together with the Karis and uh, I could see that, I could see the, the charisma in him. Uh, he's one guy who gets out of his comfort zone to do that extra thing that brings out the, the, the energy. Exactly. And I believe we have seen it today. So I wish him all the best, that was good bro. And uh, I must say that we are supporting yourself, uh, you and together with us, we are going to do it big time. You are not just fine tonight, you are fine man.